53 years to land on the earth. That is the number of years it would take. In the intermediate space, emanated Buddhas, placed in the center, spread out a brilliant light that surpasses the fires of the sun and moon. Some Buddhas have bodies streaming with water, others have bodies emitting fire. Sometimes they appear to walk, sometimes they are seated in silence. Some Buddhas go to beg their food to make a gift of it to beings. Sometimes they preach the Dharma, sometimes they shoot out rays. Sometimes they go to visit the three bad destinies and the hells of water, the shadows, and fire. Their warm breath warms up the cold water, their rays illumine the shadows. In the fiery places, they breathe out a cooling breeze, skillfully they calm the torments of the damned. By pacifying them and calming them. They save them by the bliss of the Dharma. By all of these skillful means these apparitional Buddhas, all at the same time, wanted to save the innumerable beings of the ten directions. When they had saved them, they returned to their starting point and re-entered the navel of the Buddha. A then the Bhagavath, coming out of the Suryadhaya Samadhi, asked Ananda. Did you see the power of my Abhijana Jaina during this Samadhi? Ananda relied. Yes, I saw it, and added. If it is sufficient for the Buddha to appear for just one day in order that the disciples converted by him fill space. What would not the number of those converted amount to if he remained in the world for 80 years? This is why we say that one single Buddha, whose qualities and miraculous power are immense, suffices to convert the ten directions without the need for other Buddhas. Argument number two. Furthermore, the Buddha said. A woman cannot be a Kakravartan king, Sakratavendra, or Maratavaraja, or Brahmatavaraja. Two Kakravartan kings cannot reign together at the same place. Similarly, with regard to the Bhagavath with ten powers, there cannot be two Buddhas existing in the same world. Argument number three. Finally, the Buddha said and his words are not frivolous that two Buddhas do not exist at the same time. One thing that is difficult to find is a Buddha Bhagavath. It takes innumerable koti of kalpas to find one. In 91 kalpas, there have been only three Buddhas. Before the good kalpa, during the 91st kalpa, there was a Buddha called Vipassian, views of all kinds. During the 31st kalpa, there were two Buddhas. The first was called Sikan, fire, and the second Visvabhu, victorious over all. During the good Kalpa, there were four Buddhas, Krakachanda, Kanakmuni Golden Sage, Kajyapa, and Sakyamuni. Except for these Kalpas, all the others were empty, lacking Buddhas and miserable. If the Buddhas of the Ten Directions existed, how could the Buddha say that the other Kalpas lacked Buddhas and were miserable? Answer to the Objections 1. Refutation of Argument Number 1 Although the Buddha Sakyamuni, endowed with immense miraculous power, is able to create the apparitional Buddhas established in the ten directions, preaching the Dharma, emitting rays, and saving beings, he is, however, not able to save beings without exception. To claim the opposite would be to fall into the heresy that assigns a limit to existences and to deny the existence of the Buddhas of the past. Since the number of beings is inexhaustible, there must be other Buddhas than Sakyamuni to work for their salvation. 2. Refutation of Argument Number 2 You also object. The Buddha has said that a female cannot be five things. That two Kakravartan kings cannot appear in the world simultaneously and, likewise, that two Buddhas cannot exist in the same world at the same time. You do not understand the meaning of this text. The Buddhist sutras have two meanings. Some have a meaning that is easy to understand, others have a profound meaning, remote and difficult to grasp. Thus, at the moment of entering nirvana, the Buddha said to the bhikkhus, Henceforth, you must rely on the truth in itself and not on any authority. Whatever it may be, you must rely on the meaning and not on the letter. You must rely on gnosis and not on discursive knowledge, you must rely on the sutras of explicit meaning and not on the sutras of indeterminate meaning. A. 
relying on the truth in itself is keeping to the 12 categories of texts and not keeping to the authority of a person. b. Relying on the meaning, since goodwill, or malice, defect or merit, falsity, or truth, cannot be attributed to meaning. It is the letter that indicates the meaning, but the meaning is not the letter. Suppose a man points his finger at the moon to people who doubt the moon's presence. If these doubters fixate on the finger but do not look at the moon, this man tells them. I am pointing to the moon with my finger so that you may notice the moon. Why do you fixate on my finger instead of looking at the moon? It is the same here. The letter is the finger pointing to the meaning, but the letter is not the meaning. This is why one should not rely on the letter. C. Relying on Gnosis. Gnosis allows one to appreciate and distinguish between good and evil. Discursive knowledge is always seeking pleasure and does not penetrate the essence. This is why one should not rely on discursive knowledge. D. Relying on sutras of explicit meaning. Those sutras are of explicit meaning that say. Of all the omniscient ones, the Buddha is foremost. Among all the texts, the Buddhist texts are foremost. Among all beings, the bhiksas are foremost. Through generosity one acquires great merit. Discipline allows one to be reborn among the gods, etc. On the other hand, that sutra is of indeterminate meaning which says, By preaching the Dharma, the Dharma teacher is assured of five benefits. Great merit, people's love, beauty, renown, final attainment of nirvana. Why is this sutra of indeterminate meaning? It is evident and easy to understand that generosity involves great merit, but it is not so clear that preaching the Dharma, which is not a material gift, is meritorious, as this sutra would have it. Nevertheless, it is meritorious. For the preacher, by praising generosity in every way, destroys the greed of others and combats his own greed. This is why his preaching is meritorious but the sutra's allegation being itself unclear, is called of indeterminate meaning. Many sutras, out of skillful means, say things that seem to be inexact at first sight and which require explanation. Thus, a sutra has said that two Buddhas cannot appear together in the same world, but by the same world the sutra does not mean to designate all the universes of the ten directions. The sutra also says that two Kakravartan kings are not found in the world together. It does not mean to say that two Kakravartan kings cannot coexist in the same Trisa Hasra Mahasa Hasra Lokadetu. It says only that two Kakravartan kings cannot coexist in the same catered Vipaka. It is necessary to acquire very pure merit in order to reign over the entire world without encountering a rival as is the case for the Kakravartans. If there were two kings in the same world, that would mean that their merit was not pure. Similarly, Although the Buddhas have no feeling of jealousy one against the other. Over lifetimes they have accomplished such pure actions that they cannot both appear in the same world. Namely, in the same Trisa Hasra Mahasa Hasra Lokadetu consisting of a, a million Mount Sumeris, a million suns and moons. In the ten directions, these Trisa Hasra Mahasa Hasra Lokadetus are as numerous as the sands of the Ganges and each of them constitutes the universe of a Buddha. Only one Buddha is found there, never two. In one of these Buddha universes, the single Buddha Sakyamuni incessantly creates emanated Buddhas who resort to preaching.